particularly at Lutheran Church. Merry Christmas to all of you. A few announcements this morning. Um, your poinsettias that you purchased and we brought in last week are very eager to go home. When I came in this morning, I said, is anybody going to take us out of here? We've been here for a week. So please, if you have one, take it with you. Christmas Eve. Welcome to Diane Foot this morning. We are happy that you were with us. Cookies. Thank you so much for the cookies. We did our normal three Brunswick State Police Town and Mohawk Ambulance. We had enough cookies that we were able to take them to the shut ins this year. So you really did outdo yourselves, and we thank you for that. Are there any other announcements? There's Bible study this morning. Oh, I'm sorry. There's Bible study this morning following worship. Nothing else? Enjoy your worship. Good morning. The bonfire was great. Christmas Eve was great. John, the cookies were great. I haven't had them yet because I was told not to eat them all in one day, so I didn't want to do that. Um, indeed, Seminary and Diana Foote will be uh, delivering the message today. So we thank you all for coming out and joining us at Gilead Lutheran Church, either here in the sanctuary or online, either way, as usual. We are always blessed to have you with us. On this first Sunday of Christmas, we hear stories about the uh, boy Samuel and the boy Jesus. <coughs> and we find At this point in their lives, they're growing in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and humankind. The festival continues, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. And now, not just here at Christmas time where we've got the tree up and the poinsettias and everything else, and all the gift wrapping is still probably lying on the floor in the living room. But in old times too, that spirit of Christmas. So let us begin our worship with the need to confess our shortcomings and to seek God's forgiveness. Please stand. <coughs> in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have not done. We have not ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. And let us share with each other a sign of that peace in whatever way you and the other person are comfortable doing so. Our 
honoring him this morning is number 39 in the Green Book, Joy to the World.
Shine into our hearts the light of your wisdom, O God, and open our minds to the knowledge of your word, that in all things we may think and act according to your good will, and may live continually in the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading from Holy Scripture. In our first reading this morning, Hannah visits him every year when she and her husband, Elkanah, come to the temple to offer sacrifice. Before the Lord, a boy wearing a linen ephod. His mother used to make for him a little robe and take it to him each year when she went with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. Then Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife and say, May the Lord repay you with children by this woman for the gift that she has made to the Lord. And then they would return to their home. Now the boy Samuel continued to grow both in stature and in favor with the Lord and with the people. This is the Gospel, I'm sorry, here hence the reading from 1 Samuel. Our psalm this morning is number 148, you'll find it on page 288 of the Green Book, and we'll chant the psalm responsibly by full verse. meekness and patience. 
bear with one another. And if anyone has a complaint against another, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, for which indeed you were called into the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through him. Here ends the reading from the letter to the Colossians. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. <laughs> down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. The Gospel of the Lord. <laughs> And 
They are full of regrets and guilt. Seen their little baby boy, but no one had. As a parent, I can sympathize with Joseph and Mary. We all can. When my two sons were little, now they're six one and six eight, can't call them little anymore. I kept my eye on them like a hawk. In this day and age, so many things can happen if a child is lost or left behind. Have any of you seen the movie Home Alone? Okay, good, because I just showed it to my students this week and it got me thinking about the sermon this week. If you don't know it, it's a story about a boy named Kevin who wishes his family were gone because they were being mean to him. And to be honest, he was kind of being a little brat too. When he wakes up the next morning, the whole family left on vacation, forgetting their son because of a miscounted head, and he gets his wish. Now, at first, Kevin is thrilled. What eight-year-old kid wouldn't be? Well, he eats ice cream for breakfast, he watches trashy movies, orders himself a pizza, and even dares to go into his big brother's room. Winds up destroying the whole room, but that's another story that Kevin has. One is a run-in with some robbers. He also has a neighbor. And then he decides he isn't afraid of them anymore and is going to be brave. But he needs help becoming brave. He finally has a come to Jesus moment at church of all places. When he goes in there, he sees the scary neighbor who comes over to him very luminously. That's not the right word, is it? And he says, Merry Christmas with a smile. Kevin realizes that his neighbor isn't so scary after all. Kevin actually kind of likes his neighbor. In fact, his neighbor is quite nice and they chat about his granddaughter. Kevin actually helps his neighbor, neighbor overcome his own fear of calling his son with whom he hasn't spoken in years. Kevin realizes how silly it is to be afraid of things for no reason. Kevin is able to thwart the robber's attempt to break into his house by being sly, tricky, and by overcoming his fears. By the end of the movie, Kevin has grown up, not physically, but emotionally. He beats the robbers at their own game, he talks to his neighbor and is no longer afraid of him. And he even goes shopping for groceries. When Kevin's parents finally show up, they learn about many of the things their baby boy did by himself and realize that their baby was no longer. Mary and Joseph. Mary says, child. You see, what Mary and Joseph don't realize is that Jesus is no longer the baby born in a manger. Mary and Joseph knew who Jesus was. An angel told them he would be the son of God. Did they forget that night in Bethlehem? Angels praising God, shepherds glorifying God. Remember the three wise men from the East, their gifts and an adoration? Oh, wait, that's a couple weeks from now. Yeah. So Jesus has 
grown up too, just like Kevin in the movie. He is no longer the baby in a manger, but a 12-year-old young man who knows who he is and where he belongs. Where else would Jesus be but in the temple? Jesus isn't the only one who is lost. Mary and Joseph are the ones who are lost. And while Kevin was left home alone, he too was lost until he found the courage within himself to know who he was, a brave eight-year-old boy who didn't need to be helpless or afraid. In the caravan, and in which they were traveling all over Jerusalem, Jesus is in his father's house, not his earthly father's house, Joseph, but his heavenly father's house. Mary and Joseph are lost. We too are lost. We look for Jesus in the wrong places too. We look for the joy of Christ or Christmas in a gift wrapped nicely under the tree, in some really decadent desserts or five, in a glass or two of our favorite Cabernet or whiskey, or somewhere even darker. We can look there for days, like Mary and Joseph looked for Jesus, and sometimes even years but he won't be there. We will find him right here, at the foot of the cross. Whether he is wrapped in swaddling clothes or wearing a crown of thorns, this is where we will find Jesus. You see, in the Gospel of Luke today, Mary and Joseph grow up too, just like we do. It's not about getting older, thank goodness. It's about growing a deeper, stronger relationship with God. It's about getting to know ourselves better and solidifying the values and beliefs that form our lives. Jesus does that for Mary and Joseph, and he does that for us too. It is through God's word that we grow up. Jesus has put the Father at the center of his world, and he asks Mary and Joseph and us to do the same. It is through God's word that we grow up. Jesus has moved from Mary and Joseph's home to his Father's home, his heavenly Father's home. This is not a rejection of his earthly parents, but a reprioritizing of relationships. God must be at the center of our lives, and it is only through Jesus that we can do that. Sometimes our children become our parents. They teach us lessons. They challenge us to look at our world, our lives, and ourselves in new and different and sometimes painful ways. That is exactly what Jesus' question to Mary does. Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? Jesus is telling Mary she should have known where he was. Growing up spiritually involves leaving our comfort zone, letting go of what is safe and familiar, and moving to a bigger place, to our father's place. This letting go is necessary if we are to grow in the love of Christ. It means we must leave our own little homes. The homes we live in are different from God's home. Some of our homes are filled with fear, anger, prejudice. We live with grief and addictions and feel like we are not enough. We are unlovable and wounded. Our homes leave us feeling empty and alone. Jesus tells us that, there's only, that there is not only another home for us in our Father's house, but it is a place that we are invited to. We are welcome there. 
We can feel welcomed, forgiven, redeemed, and loved. The joy of Christmas doesn't come from earthly things. It comes from a baby born in a manger. A young man in the temple, growing up and increasing in wisdom. And in the man who gave his life for us on the cross. I pray that you all are comforted by the fact that your real home, God's home, will be a home filled with mercy, forgiveness, joy, love, beauty, generosity, and compassion. And we can be comforted in this life knowing that through the Holy Spirit, God is with us to show us mercy, offer us forgiveness, and give us joy, love, beauty, generosity, and compassion. Amen. The hymn of the day is hymn number 55, found in your green books, The Christian Friends Rejoice. We acknowledge one 
that to the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Joining our voices with the heavenly host and Christians throughout time and space, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. I will end each petition with merciful God. Please respond with receive our prayer. You come to us in gatherings of your church across the globe. Unite us with those who celebrate your birth, even when they are weighed down by grief, loss, poverty, hunger, or injustice. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You come to us in the diverse splendor of the universe. Grant us the humility to trust our place in the network of creation, that we live in service to you and the natural world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You come to us through relationships of many kinds, families, friendships, communities, and nations. Guide us in these relationships that we recognize the Christ child in one another and show your love to those most vulnerable. Mer merciful God, receive our prayer. You come to us through people whom the world forgets, poor shepherds, and an imprisoned Paul announced your good news. Send your spirit to all who are poor or imprisoned or in any need this day especially those listed in our bulletin, as well as those in our thoughts. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You come to us in acts of justice and forgiveness. Open our hearts to forgive one another without permitting injustice. Supply us with the wisdom to be clothed with love, binding all things together, You come to us in empathy, accompany all who are lonely, and for those dealing with addictions of any kind, as well as for those who find themselves in abusive relationships through no fault of their own, and for all those feeling abandoned in any way, and remind all of them of your abiding presence. Accompany all who are persecuted and exploited, and open us to their cries. Merciful God, receive our prayer. All-knowing God, we now lift up to you in silence those hopes and concerns, the joys and sorrows that you alone can see written on our hearts at this moment. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Rejoicing in your word made flesh among us, we commend these prayers to you, confident of your grace and love, made known to us in Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. And while we prepare ourselves with Holy Communion as your offering is brought forward, we thank you for your ongoing support. Please be seated.
dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Turn it over. 
safely and whatnot, and open the juice part of it, for that is the blood of Christ shed for you. Thank you. 